this is a pretty big deal today. And uh, Bob, is that you? Yes, Kathy. Yeah, I wanted I to add you. one other. Uh, there is another route in New Mexico, and that one. I forty. We have been uh, tracking the progress of this journey since yesterday. Again. Oh no! Don't worry about it. Making its way through the Big Eye. In fact, uh, seems to be getting through that particular point right now, slowly as it continues to progress east along I 40. It will go underneath that Carlisle overpass where the protesters are gathered and they want to, to be heard. It's been a quiet demonstration so far, probably more than uh, just about a dozen people at last calculation who had showed up for this demonstration. The ultimate destination of the waste here calls bad, and that is, of course, the site of the whip. Classify other wastes uh, to bring to whip. We are now approaching the Carlisle overpass. I do see some people uh, standing on the bridge over there. And uh, maybe uh, we might go ahead and uh, come out, uh, Fred, and pan over to the right. And we'll go up to that bridge, and we can show folks uh, what's uh, going on. We do have some protesters uh, who are not happy with this uh, shipment coming through New Mexico uh, today. And they're out here expressing their opinion that uh, they don't think it's, uh, it's the right thing to be doing. Right, there they are. Yeah, there, there, uh, uh, there are several of them from different right, groups. Come on out. Citizens we'll for Alternatives to Radioactive Dumping, Stop the War Machine, and Nukes Out of the Duke City. And like I said, they were at Senator Domenici's office last night. Apparently one woman got arrested because she absolutely refused to leave the senator's office until she could speak to him, and he was not there to speak to, so police did arrest her. And they're out there again today uh, protesting. They don't want it going through our city. They actually don't want it at all. But a very peaceful protest, as you saw, the truck rolled right on by, nothing. Final destination, Carlsbad. We have team coverage. We'll have a complete report for you in about 55 minutes. I'm Monica Admeta. This is a low fat, but this has how much? I'm sorry. And, and I wanted to do something. I wanted to do something for her, and I couldn't. Ryan, I'm sorry. I, just, I, I don't know what's worse. I don't know. It, if it's worse having you give me false hope or preparing me for the worst. I don't want to do either. Okay, I just... Beds, uh, near Carlsbad. They're uh, buried about uh, a little more than 2,000 feet below the surface there, but uh, people still worry that someday in the future, as this stuff is compressed by uh, the uh, salt uh, closing in on it, that somehow it could make its way back to the surface and cause environmental problems in the future. Uh, scientists who've reviewed it feel that that's not likely, but Certainly the, uh, the protesters and some of the environmental groups who are concerned about it uh, have voiced these concerns, Kathy. Right, and, and that's not likely. It does leave the opening for, well, it's not impossible either. So you can understand both sides of the issue. It, it, you just never know, but at the same time, the scientists certainly try to make everyone feel confident that it's not going to happen. Right. So you can feel pretty confident about it all. And as you said, that salt just simply closes around it making it impossible, really, nearly impossible anyway, for us to ever be able to get at it again. That's correct. And inside these uh, containers, uh, we really haven't talked that much about it, but uh, inside the containers are uh, one of two types of uh, containers, uh, uh, either drums, the old standard 55-gallon drum, or something called bins, which are slightly larger than the 55-gallon drums. And inside those are a variety of uh, things like um, uh, laboratory gloves, uh, clothing, tools, uh, dry sludge, uh, things like that uh, that emit uh, primarily, as we've talked about before, alpha radiation that is uh, very uh, uh, weak in its ability to penetrate things. It cannot penetrate the skin of these uh, containers and it cannot penetrate the human skin or uh, even something as light as a piece of paper. Uh, so that's what's inside these containers. Once they get to whip, they'll be opened. Uh, the barrels or bins will be moved into the uh, underground caverns that they've been uh, that have been built down there. They are man-made. They are not natural caverns. And uh, these uh, drums will be d uh, disposed of, uh, and uh, uh, the the salt will ultimately seal around them and uh, hopefully keep it from the surface. Now, Bob, I don't remember. H how did they discover these salt? 
caverns. I mean, was it basically, did they figure they were there because of the Carlsbad caverns, and then they eventually discovered that the salt caverns were down there? Well, actually, uh, the, the salt beds, uh, there were no caves in them whatsoever. It's a, uh, about a 2,000 foot uh, layer of uh, pure salt uh, beneath the area to the east of Carlsbad. It's been very stable for about 200 million years, so the site of an ancient ocean. Hmm. And uh, there were no caverns down there, so actually they, ex they sunk shafts from the surface all the way down more than 2,000 feet and dug out these caverns and created them uh, by hand uh, with using machines and such uh, over the past uh, years, uh, Kathy. And so all of these are man-made, and that's one of the reasons that they're going to seal back up again once the, uh, uh, all of the waste is uh, put in there. Uh, then, uh, and the people stop tending these uh, man-made shafts, they will gradually begin to close in and seal uh, the nuclear waste. Okay, all right. And really, the people outside of, uh, or at least south, I would say southeastern New Mexico, particularly in Eddy County, they're very pleased to have the whip site down there. As many, as many protesters as there are, I would say there are probably 10 times as many people who are thrilled to have the whip site in their area as, as far as the economy goes and that they're pleased to have it there because it really has meant the world to them as far as jobs go. That's correct. Uh, of course, they've had a uh, very vigorous potash mining industry down there. They're very familiar with mining and working, uh, working uh, below the surface down there. Uh, the economy was rather depressed when WIP came to the area, and uh, and DOE, uh, to its credit, made a uh, big effort to go down and uh, re reassure folks about how they were going to approach this. Uh, also, the state of New Mexico has been very aggressive in its oversight uh, the, through uh, several uh, committees and uh, several agencies that have been watching over the development of WIP and now the ultimate storage of nuclear waste down there. And that, so that's why you you have this sense of, of satisfaction that, that it is uh, as safe as it can be made at this, at this time, uh, a sense from both the state agencies and the, as you pointed out, the vast majority of the people in southeastern New Mexico. All right, Bob, we are going to take a break from this, and of course we're going to have a complete wrap-up of the trip of the whip shipment and the protesters' viewpoints as well. I want to let you know quickly, while this event was a bigger deal today, there are going to be many shipments over the next year right through our city. The similar shipments planned for the rest of this month, the 13th of January, the 15th, the 20th, and the 22nd, so it's going to become very commonplace that these shipments are going to be going through Albuquerque. So we're going to have a complete wrap-up of today's events for you coming up today at noon. We'll see you then. This is a News 13 special report.